All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about the MicroStrategy SDK and how you can use that in your own custom .NET applications. Stay tuned. All right, hello, everyone. So today we're going to be taking a look at the MicroStrategy SDK with .NET. Um, so let me just give you a little background here and kind of paint the picture of what we're doing. So the use case or the requirement in this instance is users would like to be able to um, essentially create a banding report, right? So they want to be able to select a range of values or multiple ranges, I should say. Um, so if you take a look at the application I have here on the screen. We'll kind of go. Th let's go through this first. I think this makes more sense. So here we have a .NET application, and this is what we're going to be developing. Um, simple drop down. We're selecting a category: books, electronics, music, movies, and then we're just going to select a date range. And then down here we can select banding. Okay. So what this banding is, this will allow us to um, enter multiple ranges. So we could say we only want transactions zero to $10, 10 to $20, and 20 to $30, right? Now, you might be thinking, well, we can do this easily in a MicroStrategy report. But the difference here is what we're going to be doing is for each band, each range we enter here, the user wants an entire report, right? So they want an entire, not, they don't just want one row that shows the, the metrics for that particular range. They want an entire report of transactions from zero to ten dollars, ten to twenty dollars, or whatever, right? Whatever ranges they choose. So we're going to allow them to choose up to five ranges here, uh, just for this demo. But that's what we're going to be doing. Now, this is actually a situation I encountered in a real production environment. So I actually have an application very similar to this running in a live production environment. Um, so that's what we're going to be creating today. So I just wanted to start out with showing you what we're going to be doing, demoing it for you. So let's go ahead and run this. So here I have pre-populated books. Um, I have a pre-populated date range. And then I'll enter, I'll, we'll leave these ranges. So let's click Execute, and let's see what we get. All right. So now, if you scroll down here, so now you can see we have three separate reports, entire reports, right? These are all these are reports that exist on MicroStrategy, and what this application has done is it has executed the report separately for each range, returned the results from MicroStrategy, and displayed it on the web page. So you can see this is the these are the results for our first band, zero to ten dollars. These are the reports for our second band, ten to twenty dollars, and this is the report for our third band, twenty to thirty dollars. All right, so now let's jump in and see how I accomplish this. All right, so we saw the application and what we're going to be creating. The next thing I just want to show you quickly is the report. Um, so this, uh, what I have here on the screen is the underlying report. Simple report. We're just pulling the customers with their associated revenue and units sold. Now, these are the three prompts corresponding to our three um, parameters that you saw on the on the on the .NET web application there. We have our choosing this is an, this is a uh, element prompt on category. Then we have a value prompt on date. Again, simple where we just have we're just selecting between a date range, simple prompt again, value prompt on date. And then we have another value prompt between values on revenue. So you can see we're selecting values between a certain revenue. And again, just value prompts. Simple, straightforward. So that's the report uh, that the SDK is going to use to produce the results we saw. So now let's jump into the code and see what's really going on. Actually, that was a lie. Before I show you the code, I quickly want to show you the task administrator. So Again, we're using obviously SDK to do this, but what we're using more specifically is called the task API. Now, I actually went over this in another video where I did this very same similar thing with Java, um, but I'll go through it again. Um, so if you go to this URL in your environment here, again, obviously you'd replace my server name with your server name, slash microstrategy, slash ASP. This would be servlet if you're using Tomcat. 
but this task admin. Okay, so you go to this URL here, and what this is, this is basically just a simple web interface that allows you to try out the task API and sort of interact with it. Um, and then think of the task API as kind of like just services, right? They're services you can call to execute certain functions in MicroStrategy, right? So you can log in with this. You can uh, browse folders with this. You can, as we're going to be doing, executing reports with this and getting the results as uh, XML or JSON. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things you can do with this. So anyway, so this is the URL for that. So this first page, this is just all the different services available and the descriptions. Um, so let's go to the next page, Parameters. All right, so the Parameters tab, this is where you simply choose your service and it shows you the available parameters, which, which ones are required and a description of them. All right, but what, we're, what I want to show you here is the Builder tab. Okay, now this is where you can actually interact with these services and really test them out. All right, so the service we're going to be using today is called the Report Data Service. Now, the one thing I want to point out here is that most of these services will require a valid session, which means you're going to want to use the logon UPI. See how there's a logon, login, logout? Uh, not login logout service. You're going to want to use this, enter a valid username and password, and what this will return is this will return a session, which is just a like a string, right? But it's a, it's it's your essentially your key in the MicroStrategy. So when you use so what you would do is you would log in with this task, you would get a session. Okay? You would then call and then you would do this in code of course. You would then call these other services that you want to interact with and you would pass it that sessions. See this parameter here? So you'd pass that session string in there. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how to, how to use these services. But I'm just talking, I just want to give you the, uh, some, of the, some more background behind how some of these services work so that when you go to apply them to your specific situation, you can. Um, now, the service we're going to be using is the report data service. This service actually handles logging in, executing the report, returning the results, and logging out for you. So we don't need to enter a valid session here. It's going to take care of that for us as long as we pass a valid username and password, which we're going to do. All right. So we're going to enter our server name here. Now, when you enter these parameters, be sure to check this checkbox to include. This way it includes it. Um, so again, so let's, let's finish entering our parameters here. So the project, right, needs to know what project we're, we're, the report is, is in. Again, enter our username and password. Password is blank. Now, for executing reports with this, you need a style name. Uh, it's kind of like the report style in a way, the report format in a way. For I just use custom XML report style, right? We're, we want the reports in XML. I use this style. There are a few different ones. You can research them if you want. Um, but this is the one I usually work with, stick with. Um, we're gonna, of course, we need the report ID. So let's enter that. We'll check the checkbox. Now, our prompts. This is what I want to talk about. So remember, we have element prompts and value prompts. Now, the, in case you don't know, the element prompts, or all these prompts, when you're passing these values to the SDK, they have a particular format they need to follow. So I'm going to bring up Notepad here, and I'm going to show you this. Okay. So this line right here, this is our element prompt, right? So this, these are the prompts where you can choose from a list of values, okay? Now, the format is this. First, you enter the attribute ID, right? So in our case, it's category. So this is the ID of that attribute. Then you enter a semicolon. Now, don't ask me why, but they make you enter the attribute ID again. Then a colon and then the actual value. Okay? Now, if you wanted to choose multiple values, you'd do the same you you'd repeat kind of this part here. Right? So, again, starts out with the attribute ID and then you basically enter your values. And your values need the attribute ID again, a colon and the actual value. So, this one, this is the this is the ID value of the attribute. Now, so that they, let's say this refers to books or whatever, right? If we wanted to add, also add electronics, we would tack on a semicolon, the attribute ID again. Again, I know it's redundant, but it is what it is. 
then a colon, and then the answer ID, let's say it's a two, right? And we can keep going on and on and, and, and entering. That's how we enter our list of values for our element prompt, okay? So we'll go ahead and paste this in to our builder here. Oh, they're already there. I guess I did this previously. Check the box. Now, value prompt answers. Those have an even different format. So that's this line in Notepad right here. Now, the format for this is pretty straightforward. So we're passing, remember, we're passing a date range and then a band, OK? So you simply works like this. You pass your date range, caret symbol, then your other value prompt, the, the, the ending date, caret symbol, our beginning range, caret symbol. Anyway, so it's very simple, right? It's just the, the, the prompt values separated by a caret. That's it. Very simple. So we'll paste that in. Check the checkbox to include this. And that's it. So now we've entered all of our parameters. Oh, we missed one thing. The task envelope and the task content type. Now, the task envelope, this is essentially the wrapper. This is what's going to wrap our report results, right? So it's just like kind of like um, uh, the status, the result will be in there. You'll see, you'll see when we, when we execute this. So I just select XML for this, right? This, 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 this is basically XML that will contain our report XML, the data, right? So that's like the container kind of, the, the container format is how you can think of that. Now, what do we want the report results to be in? The data, what do we want that? JSON, you can select JSON. I'm going to choose XML for this example, so we'll choose XML. Now, everything's been, all of our, all of our uh, parameters have been populated and filled out. So what you want to do is you want to come down here and click Update URL. Now look what that's done here. That has given us a URL. So this URL contains all the parameters we just entered here. It contains our server. It contains um, the project. It contains the report ID. It contains the parameters we entered. Now look at here. You see these value prompt answers? See how these are a little different? You don't see the slashes, right? That's because this is a URL, and certain characters are prohibited when you're, when you're calling URLs. So what MicroStrategy has done is it's formatted these. Um, to, to, it's, it's encoded them, basically. It's encoded the URL. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's our URL. Now, so this is actually the URL we will invoke from our .NET application. We will end up building this URL and invoking this in our .NET application. And again, remember, this web page I'm showing you here is just how you can interact with these services and kind of test them out, try them out, um, understand how they work before putting them in your, in your, in your code, in your custom code. All right, so let's go ahead and invoke this URL now. Click Invoke. Give it a second. And there we go. Here's our results. Now, the envelope, this is this. See this task response, status code 200, right? This is the, the we wanted this in XML. So this is just like a wrapper uh, node uh, that contains our report XML, which is here. So you can see the report name, demo, report ID. And here, you can actually see the report results down here, right? So you can see the transaction dollars. The units, right? So this, this, this is our report results here in XML format. Uh, so yeah, so that is the task administrator. Now, let's jump into the code and see how we implement this. All right, so let's take a look at the code. Now, when it comes to .NET, this is not intended to be a .NET tutorial. So I'm just going to show you how I did this, uh, but again, if you know .NET, which I'm sure if you're watching this, you do, you can you can do there. There are many different ways to do this, so I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Now, what I have done is I created a MicroStrategy Report Helper class. Okay, and in this class, I just have some application settings, right? So like the server name, the use, the logon. I can just store all that as settings in the config. Um, even the base URL I store as a setting in the config. Um, so that's kind of how I go about that. Now, as far as building the URL, remember the report builder, we, the um, task administrator, we, we saw how it built the URL when we entered parameters. I just use simple 
dot net functions as you might expect to do that right so I have here add style name and as you can see all it does is tack on style name equals the, the style to the to the base URL right so I take this base URL that is just a parameter right I tack on server, project, username, password, right? All the configs, config, configuration stuff, really. Configuration parameters. Um, but the dynamic parameters from the web page, as you might imagine, I have functions to do that, right? So, so the style, it just keeps appending to that URL string, right? The report ID just keeps appending to that URL string. The prompts, simple, just get appended. I already showed you the format of the element prompts and the value prompts, right? Now, let's go to the actual code here, okay? So this function actually gets called. I pass it the report ID, the element prompt and value prompt answers. And then it calls those functions I just showed you, which are pended to the string. And then I have this function on the report helper called get report HTML. This is what actually executes that URL. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so this is kind of where the magic happens, so to speak. So this takes the task API URL. This is the final URL that I've built, right? I've appended all my settings. I've appended all my parameters. I've taken them as input from the web page, okay? And here it is. That's in this object here. Now, what I do is, if there's like spaces in your project name, like um, you know, like MicroStrategy Space Tutorial, what I do is I make sure I get rid of any spaces from the URL. You might know a better way to do this. I just do a replace space with a plus sign. That's just one little kind of. So I'm going to teach you kind of all the quirks that I had to work through. So I'll, that's one thing that I had to work through when when trying to get this to work. I had to replace any spaces with a plus sign. Okay. Now coming down here. This is how I invoked the URL. Now Java, I actually have found it easier to invoke the URL, and I'm not a Java expert as it is, but I'm actually much better with .NET, and I actually found it more difficult to implement. So what I've done here is I use this web client class. Okay, I set default credentials to true, and then I use this download string function from of the web client, and then I, of course I pass it the URL. Okay. Um, so that's how I invoke this URL, so to speak, from .NET, okay? These three lines here is, is really how I do that, okay? Now, the result of this string will be the result, same results we saw in the task administrator. I throw those into this report result um, variable here. Now I load the XML, okay, into an XML document. Uh, quickly, one other little quirk that I that I found is it will actually have carriage returns inside the uh, XML string. So all I do is I just replace the ba anything the backslash r's backslash n's with with nothing. I just I just kind of filter those out of the uh, the XML string before loading it into my XML document. Okay. Now from here, I just create a simple HTML table. Okay. I loop through all over all the XML nodes and then populate the table with the data that was returned by the task API. Okay, that's all I'm doing here. Now, this is starting to get into .NET, which this is not meant to be a .NET tutorial. Once, but once you have the report XML, you'll know what to do. Um, so yeah, so that's the code. That's how I did it. That's how it works. All right, so that'll do it. This is a new channel. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and thanks for watching.